All right, are you making these mistakes on your Wix website? You might be. My name is Ashley and I'm here to make Wix simple. And I'm gonna go over some mistakes that I see a lot of clients make before I've started working with them. Um, these are things that they've you know, DIY'd their whole website, which is awesome and I fully support, um, but just things that I, I notice over and over again. So let's hop right in. One of the first things that I notice all the time is that when somebody, let me get this out of our way, when somebody uh, adds a new page to their site, often they are either utilizing a template or sometimes making a copy of an existing page and they never go into the settings of that page to change the URL slug, to update the page title, the meta description. And so, you know, then they're ending up with pages on their website that are like migratesite.com slash copy of about dash four. And so that is one of the first things I check when I hop onto a new client's website. I go over here um, in the editor to their pages and menu panel. And then I'm just gonna take a look at these things. So for instance, maybe let's look into this category one, category two. Uh, on any of the pages on your site, you can hover from this place onto the ellipses here and get into some higher level settings about this page. So I'm gonna go into those settings and I'm just gonna take a look. So what I can see is that the page name on my menu is category one. Great, that makes perfect sense. I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the SEO basics. That's where I'm going to get more information about the URL slug, so the end, the last part of the URL, as well as the page title and the meta description, which those are the two things that are gonna show up like on Google when somebody finds your website um, as the name and the description for that page. There's a little preview of that here. So I can see here, this is just like a template um, of my own that I've built, so I might not be finding the errors <laughs> that I'm pointing out, but let's pretend, right? Let's pretend that this category one, we do not want it to live at category one and we want it to be called soap or something. Um, this URL slug is where you would make that change. And so um, I'm actually just gonna keep it what it was, but you can see all you have to do is click into it and then you will be able to make that adjustment. And Wix does have a feature where if you're changing the slug, you used to have to set up your own redirect so that, you know, we publish newsletters, social posts, stuff on Pinterest, um, utilizing links that if we ever change those links and we don't set up a redirect, they just lead people nowhere. Um, so one nice feature that's pretty recent on Wix is updating and creating redirects when you change the slug, which is chef's kiss, awesome. So that is where you will find that. You just wanna make sure it's short and it always makes sense um, for what content is on that page. And at the very least, you don't want it to be copy of about page or something silly. Um, and then the title tag and the meta description, those are things that you can work on page by page here in the editor. Um, but I also highly suggest utilizing the SEO setup checklist that Wix offers. So you can actually jump to it right from here. If you click go to SEO setup, um, it'll pop open in a new page and it'll show you kind of step by step what you need to do to get the SEO for this website above board. This is an absolutely awesome tool. Um, and it actually is another mistake that I see clients make where they've built their website and they've published it or they think they've published it um, and they haven't you know, taken the five to 10 minutes to go through this SEO checklist to get their site connected to Google. And so that's something that you do not wanna overlook. Um, in this case, this is like a site template and a draft and it's not gonna be published. So I'm not gonna click through it here, but um, you can kind of see it blurred out in the back. Um, what this is, is it really holds your hand in getting your site optimized. So you'll click through, you'll follow their instructions. It's literally like red light, green light. Um, what are your keywords? And then it'll take your keywords. They're also um, utilizing AI to help generate um, meta descriptions and stuff. So super simple, don't, you know, overlook that feature. It's awesome and it and it's important to do. Um, so page titles, uh, URL slugs, page 
meta descriptions. That is something that I bump into often on people's websites. Um, that is just such an easy fix that, you know, when you know where to find this information and how to make those adjustments is so simple to do. Um, another thing that I, um, bump into a lot is I see, you know, one thing that Wix does awesome is they make drag and drop design elements and, um, they make it really easy to kind of like build out pieces of your website, but a mistake that I bump into that a lot of people make is just really taking things off the shelf and plopping them and not making any kind of adjustments to the designs, not customizing them, not having them match their branding. And, um, you know, it's a really simple thing to customize, but I don't think a lot of people maybe know that you can do that. So, um, as an example, again, this is a draft. I'm going to make my face smaller for a moment here. We are going to just add a page real quick. I'm just going to have it be a blank page and I'm just going to show you a couple of things um, as an example. So I'm going to title this. I'm going to hide it so it's not up on my menu. And then I'm just going to play around here for a moment to show you. So say you are working on a page of your website and you need to add a list and you go to your ad panel, you go down to list, you look at all of your options and you choose, I don't know, this one, right? So I see so many sites that have the exact, I can tell when I land on a website, like that's a Wix website that somebody built themselves um, because it, they just have the elements straight out of kind of the box, if that makes sense. So um, I highly recommend anytime you're adding a kind of pre-designed element to just take that extra moment to customize it a little bit for your brand. Um, and you don't, it doesn't have to be this like big thing, but keeping consistent fonts and colors and, you know, ele design elements like buttons that are either solid or boxes, that type of thing can really go a long way to making your site feel more like you and your business and your brand versus just something that's like very generic. Um, so in this case, you know, like there's nothing wrong with this repeater, um, but something I could do that would easily make it um, match my branding more is just of this, you know, imaginary template site is just go into these elements and adjust the font. So any of these parts of this, in this case, this is a hover repeater. So if I like click into it, I can see it's a repeater and then I can see all of the things that are on that repeater. There's some text, there's some text, there's, I don't want great, there's a container box, a photo or an image. Um, just taking, you know, the extra time to go into that text and change it to the font of your website is going to be, you know, it's going to make a big difference. So that's obviously not the font of this website, but you get what I'm saying here. Taking the time to do that, um, is just, you know, why not do it? So that is another thing that I bump into a lot. And then the other one, um, I could go on and on, but the other big one that I see is that people spend a lot of time um, building their uh, desktop website. So they are in the editor, they're on their laptop or desktop computer, they're doing all of their design choices and then hitting publish and like patting themselves on the back and being like, I'm done. Um, mobile optim optimization is absolutely crucial and it's a step that a lot of people skip. Um, Wix occasionally uh, really nails mobile optimization and it will intuitively put all of your little design elements exactly where they should be and they make perfect sense on mobile and you're good to go. Um, but a lot of the time that is not the case and we do need to do a little bit of housekeeping on the mobile view. So um, after you design anything, even after you kind of hop into an existing site and make some changes, it is crucial to hop into mobile view and just make sure everything looks good there. So in this case, you know, I started with a blank page, I popped in a repeater, and then for the sake of like, you know, hopefully making this a good example, I'm also gonna plop some text on there. So I'm gonna go to my ad panel, I'm gonna choose some text, I'm just putting that there, and then maybe, well, let's center this. And then let's say this is supposed to be up here and then we'll hop into mobile view and see what we have. 
So I've designed it. I'm like, cool, it looks great. Publish it. I'm going to um, go up to this top uh, menu up here and go switch to mobile. Just take a little peek at what this would look like on someone's cell phone. Um, in this case, you know, like it's not terrible. Those all make sense. I'm, I'm not unhappy with them, but I can see just by looking at it that the text element that I added, instead of taking up horizontal space is a small box. So that's something that if I didn't hop into my mobile view, I wouldn't notice. Since I'm in here, what I can do is make those adjustments where I'm going to stretch that out and I'm going to center it. And while I center it, I'll show you a tool that um, anytime I work in person one-on-one -on -one with their site, and I show them this, they're like, mind is blown. Um, so I stretch out that text box and now I want to center it. Now I can click on this and I can pull it over to the center and I'm gonna see these grids and it's gonna snap to that grid and that's one way to do it. But a tool that is at your disposal that a lot of people don't utilize is our um, tool panel. So up here on this menu, if I go over to this little wrench and click tools, I can toggle on my toolbar and my layers panel. Layers panel is also awesome. There's another video on my channel about the layers panel, especially it's very helpful if you've put something on your page and then it goes missing. You can find it in your layers panel, um, but we're going to use toolbar really quickly. We're going to turn that on. And what I can do here is select the element that I want to center or left justify or whatever. And I can go over here to align and I can force it to go to the center. So I click that open. I'm going to click align to center and boom, it's centered for you. So um, mobile optimization, it's something that I think is really easy to overlook. My cat is mad. Um, it's really easy to overlook, but only takes, you know, a little bit of extra time and it is a must. So those are some of the top things that I encounter on sites that people have DIY'd. If there's something that you have been struggling with on your page that you're just you know, stuck, feel free to reach out in the comments. I'm always looking for ideas to make new videos to help you solve your problems and make sure to subscribe for more videos.